Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, Place Abiding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. I'm just gonna let you know right off the bat, this one's gonna be a weird one, because we have a run that's mid-run, so you're like, what the heck happened? First off, this run is dynamite. You wanna look at the items we got here. Void, which I think is sucked up Trinket Smelter. Death's List, Fate. Uh, Yuzu, is that a weird Yuzu plum? I don't know. Mob, the Void, Incubus, anyway, the run's incredible. You, you don't need to worry yourself about that. Basically... I was, uh, and, and we'll do this whole run, which is only on the Catacombs one right now, and then we'll fit in another one on top, just because it's a little bit of a strange one, right? Um, I was mid-run, ten minutes in, having a great time. Oh, right, I forgot to mention I used Mama Mega on this floor. I have vague recollections of that. Um, definitely suck that up. And, uh, we had a little veterinary situation pop up, and it... It's not really an emergency situation. However, it became an emergency situation because it's uh, Sunday, so all the normal, you know, vets' offices are closed. <laughs> so we, the only thing that was open was like a 24-hour uh, a emergency clinic. We took uh, the cats in, everything's fine. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's essentially how it happened. It was one of those non-urgent, urgent things that comes up in... Uh, Adult life from time to time. Friends till the, end. the important... Hey! Well, at least we can smelt it. Um, the important thing is, and I'm not just putting that in ears here. Everyone's okay. Everyone's uh, doing all right. So we'll be moving on. And it, you might be wondering, what, it, what was in the lost commentary from the first part of the episode? It's actually thematically very fitting. Because I was complaining about how this is also the morning... Oh, I was waiting for a charge on that one. <laughs> now I remember. Um, you know what? We'll just grab this. It's not, Neither of them are that great for us in our current situation. But um, I was complaining about how, like, ah, oh, dude, the, it's the day that daylight saving starts. So everybody's on, like, one less hour of sleep, and it's, like, one of the, one of the worst days of the winter, you know? When you get that one night of... Slightly less sleep, and then all of a sudden, uh, it got a little worse. But everything's okay now. That's the important part. And this is it. Don't let anybody tell you that I don't care about, you know, the way things go in Isaac either. Because I could have easily just been like, nah, nah, nah. We're going to yeet this episode. And then, you know, the streak will be artificially ended, but we'll re-add it at some point. I didn't want to do that, you know. I'd rather just... Get it sorted as soon as possible here. If I can put in a little extra time, play a little extra Isaac. Let's be honest. Can I? I'm, if I'm leveling you with, with you 100%, I should say, um, this is the reason I have a backlog. When people are like, why do you have so many Isaac episodes in reserve? You're like, well, what if the unexpected pops up? They're like, what if the unexpected doesn't pop up? And then you're like, well, then I could just take a couple of days off. <laughs> oh. Anyway, it's hard to switch gears from like, you know, taking your cat to the vet and making sure everything's okay to all of a sudden we're like midway through an Isaac run that I started recording four hours ago. But we, we're gonna get there, we're gonna figure it out. It just takes time. It just takes a little time. Uh, you're in the middle of the ride, everything, everything will be all right. Everything, everything will be uh, just fine. Just fine. Is that... Now, I know it's Jimmy Eat World. But is that Jimmy Eat World... Is that from American Pie? I'm being totally sincere here. Is that from American Pie? Or is it from... The 2002 DJ Qualls movie, The Kid? I think that might be from the DJ Qualls movie, The Kid. I can't remember what happens in that movie. I know that at, at some point in that movie, I never saw it, but one of my friends saw it, and I have on his authority, on his 8th grade authority, because that's the, how old we were when it came out, that it was the funniest effing movie ever. Um, I believe he suffers some kind of catastrophic penile injury in that film. Is that correct? I feel like I was, I was informed that it gets bitten off by a dog or perhaps a... Uh, you know, pancaked by a steamroller or something like that. I'm not 
um, don't quote me on this. I, I went greedy on that one. I went for the suck. So we got a little less damage, but a little bit more speed. I could live with that. I mean, let's be honest. With Ma of the Void, we don't really have much to worry about in that department anyway. I never saw that movie. And that's surprising in and of itself. Because I have seen two American Pie films. I saw American Pie 2 75 times, I think. I, I didn't like any of them, just for the record. But it's funny how, like, the, the, the place that you're in in your life can determine a lot about, you know, the way that a movie hits you. Like, I know that American Pie 2 is not a good movie by just about every measure that you could possibly imagine. Um, but because it came out, like, when I was in 8th grade, you know, you're just getting those first little, like, inklings of independence. I saw it at, like, uh, what I'm going to describe as a house party, but it wasn't really, like, it wasn't like it was a rager. You know? It was just we went over to my friend's house, we watched American Pie 2. <laughs> but because it was like, you know, it was my first taste of that, especially having grown up in such a rural area, American Pie 2 has a certain, like, you know, there's a little magic to it, and that also explains, to be honest, why I think I've seen it so many times. It's like the same as uh, Tommy Wiseau's The Room, you know? I saw it in my... Uh, well, we don't really want that. I don't know. Do we even? I guess we do want to suck it up. We've got some offensive potential here. Um, I saw it in my my last year of college, which is a great time to see it. You're old enough to get the movie. The internet was not at its nascent or anything like that. You know, it wasn't like the first little inkling of the internet existing. Um, but you know, certain like like Web 2.0 was just starting to run wild. You know. You could watch quotes from the movie on YouTube and stuff like that instead of waiting for the movie to re-air or buying the VHS tape or something like that. So, you know, I think it, 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 it went well. It went well there. I'm sure that movies that I thought were just okay are going to be that for a lot of other people as well. Like, I, I can tell you right off the bat, last year, Jojo Rabbit, even though I didn't like it that much, I, wanted, I don't want to take too much heat on this one. I thought it was fine. I just didn't think it was particularly great um, but without a doubt it has a like a fantastic heart it's very sincere that's those are not backhanded compliments not in my world at least um, I think Jojo Rabbit is gonna be that movie for a lot of people I think for a lot of people that were born in like 2002 to 2006 they're gonna see Jojo Rabbit and it's gonna like it's gonna change him you know, they're, they're gonna look to that and be like, that was the first, like, real movie I can remember seeing in theaters and loving. The other one I always bring up is seeing The Hangover, like, opening night in 2009. Being in college and also, like, you know, a little intoxicated at the time. <laughs> As we were watching it, we were like, hey, it's a movie made just for us. It went on to become a little bit of a cultural phenomenon. I'm not sure if you're aware of this film, The Hangover. Um, that's fine. I actually think it's worth going for just to see what else we got in the pool here. Anyway, let's get out of here. I'm sure Parasite will be that movie for a lot of people too, you know? They'll, they'll be at an age where they're like, this is like the second foreign film I've ever seen. And by the way, I love Parasite. I thought Parasite was amazing. But me, you know, as a 31-year-old, I kind of see the movie and I'm like, eh, it's great. And then I go eat a dinner and, you know, I when people ask me what my favorite movie of all time is, I go, I can't say that one. It just came out. People are going to make fun of me. So I say the same movie I've said since I was 16, which is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. The, the place that you're at in your life, it, it affects a lot. I think I notice it the most with respect to music as well. Like, movies you could be nostalgic for, but like... It's hard for me to explain, but like, as you get older... I don't know, I think for the most part people have more of an emotional connection with music. So when you, when you hear like a certain song, you can remember like, Oh, I was there. I, I can put myself right back in my shoes. And then like 20 years later, you're like... Uh, I believe if I heard this song for the first time now, I would probably think it's garbage. But because I already have those built-in memories of like 11th grade, this is the greatest song ever written in my world. I know we're leaving... Oh, there it is. 
Look, it's been a long day. I I choose not to suffer any curses today. <laughs> I am choosing to uh, sp not speed. I think is that's an inappropriate way to describe it. We're we're doing a lot of Isaac today, okay? The only thing that would destroy me right now is if right after this run, which is obviously great. I think we're just going to pick it up. Uh, right after this run, that's obviously great. If they hit me with like a train wreck run, I might uh, not leave my office maybe for the next three weeks. We'll see. We'll see. It doesn't have to come to that. I'm just saying, Isaac, my mental state to a minor extent is in your hands right now. So I'm, I'm leaving it up to you, okay? I'm leaving it up to you. I'll just take this so we have one ready. Probably won't need it. I want to... Eh, I was thinking, like, I want to keep it moving because we could probably get to boss rush. Realistically, with 25 seconds left... Yo, it's a luck upgrade. Realistically, with 25 seconds left, it's literally possible. And now it's literally impossible. Unpossible? It's going to be one of those days, huh? Still, we're going. It's not really about boss rush. Not right now. It's about sending a message. Don't you step on me. Anyway, it's weird because, like, you know, apart from today, we're definitely going to take that, too. Apart from today, my weekend was really good. It was productive, did a lot of chores, did a lot of, you know, stuff that needed to be done. Got a little relaxing, and it was good. I had a good time. Went grocery shopping. It was an anecdoteless grocery trip. Except for the fact that I think, you know, the, the COVID-19 virus stuff is starting to... Starting to grip people here. Um, even though there's not that many cases in, in BC. It's one of those things people are... And I, I'm not saying I'm exempt from it, but people are very funny, you know? A month ago... Nobody cared about toilet paper insofar as they had enough sheets to wipe their own detritus. Now, I really feel like here's the here's the psychology I feel of the of the toilet paper panic buy. First off, on a logical level, why is toilet paper the number one thing that people are trying to buy uh, in order to protect themselves from this virus? I honestly have no idea. I guess what it comes down to is it's very unpleasant to uh, not have toilet paper. Look, you're not going to like what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it anyway, okay? In a pinch, as long as you still got running water, which I, you know, I, I don't see why in a pandemic we would necessarily lose running water. At least in a, you know, a, a super unexpected and untimely fashion. Obviously, like, if things go completely belly up, you know, you might lose running water. If you lose running water here, that's way worse than not being able to wipe your butt in the first place. But, like... In a pinch, don't, don't shoot the messenger on this one, okay? In a pinch, you run out of toilet paper, you can just hop in the shower. It's gross. You know, it's not something you would do for sport. You would, you would probably find it very unpleasant. However, you know, this isn't something you just do because it's, you know, Sunday and it sounds like a good time. You're in the middle of an outbreak, you know? Like, if, if it comes to it, you can always do that. That's what I'm saying. But I think what happens is that it, it's like Bitcoin. And you're going to have to hear me out on this one. <laughs> is there some intrinsic value to Bitcoin? Sure. You know, I, I don't know what it is. But I'm, I'm not going to deny that it, you know, has some kind of use case and, and interest factor for people. However, in 2017, why was your grandma, your uncle, your pizza delivery guy, you know, the president, why was everyone trying to buy uh, cryptocurrency? Why was everyone talking about cryptocurrency? Social media and, and the news in general. We're just going to go up here. Broadcasting to everyone like, hey, look, Bitcoin was five grand last month. Now it's like, you know, 22 grand. If it does that six more times, you're going to be a literal trillionaire. I think it motivates people who were not, you know, previously interested at all. All of a sudden they're like, yo, I'm going to take a look. Now, I, I'm being 100% sincere when I say this. I feel like the exact same thing is literally happening with toilet paper. I think people are like, toilet paper? Not interested. Then they go, they watch the news and they see that 
you know, 500,000 people are rushing the grocery stores to try to buy toilet paper. And they're going, I don't really get it, but now that there's a panic and there's a run on toilet paper, I got to go out there and get some toilet paper because if I don't get some toilet paper, there's going to be none left for me. I don't want to have to jump in the shower to clean my bottom like I'm some kind of, <laughs> like I didn't prep. Anyway. It's been frustrating. I don't want to talk about it. it. Like, it hasn't affected our quality of life at all, but it's affected the discourse, which is annoying for me because I live my life online predominantly. Um, I'm trying to explain to people that there is a middle ground somewhere between, uh, you know, completely not caring about, you know, the effects of the outbreak at all, and alternatively, like, I immediately have to run out and buy, you know, six months worth of food. No, you you could you could just wash your hands and like don't go to a don't go to like a James Taylor concert where there's gonna be fifty thousand fans, you know? Anyway, we don't need to go down that road just because, you know, I was at the grocery store yesterday and it wasn't too bad, you know. Again, I made this bit about Whole Foods last week when it was still ongoing, obviously. But, um, you know, the grocery store is just kind of like, oh, baby, too expensive to prep. But then I will say when we were there this time, first off, literally everybody was using hand sanitizer at all times. And the majority of the time, if this was just a normal circumstance... I would have been like, don't do that, you're going to create the next super bug. Now, I'm like, yo, this is the time, good on ya. <laughs> However, I did notice that the supplies were dwindling for a couple of things. Rice, in particular, was one. That, that was really the only one, to be honest, but... And maybe they just didn't get a good shipment of rice. Maybe they maybe they got the shipment and they were like, ah, this is is this Jasmine? We're supposed to have Basmati. And you know what? It I, it did kind of send a message into my human brain. You know, the cerebellum via the spinal cord. It said like, oh, there's no rice here. You know what I could really go for? Some rice. I gotta go get some rice, dude. Then I realized, oh right, we got rice at home. We got like a 20 kilogram sack because that's just how much we eat it. All right, okay, here we go. 17 minutes in, nine wins in a row, and a fresh one's on the books. <laughs> oh, the D100, Ludovico technique and good stats. 6 CD8, Och. Only thing I don't like here is our shot speed, but we will use the D100 um, as much as we feel like it, if that makes sense. I think we've screwed ourselves with the D100 very recently, but that was, to be fair, because we encountered a six room as well, but anyway. All things considered, you know, now that the situation is normal here at home, so everything's A-OK, -okay. it was still a good weekend, you know, you gotta look on the bright side of life. If anything, I'm, I'm glad that we had this incident, if it had to pop up, I'm glad it popped up on the same day that you lose an hour of sleep. Or have to sleep in for an hour, which, you know, it sounds like a luxury, but I think the the older you get, the tougher it is to do that. I'm glad it happened on the same day. That way we, we'll concentrate a little bit of unpleasantness, hopefully, moving forward. It is true, by the way, like... Hear me out here. I want to try something like... Oh, that's very nice, actually. Hold up. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm freaking out here for a second. I'm like, I don't know if this is actually sensible at all. Well, we want the most items we could reroll is ideal. You know what? I'm, I'm feeling like today's the day when we want to go freaking loco, dude. So why don't you grab this, use it, grab this, take that, use the pill, reroll these sons of guns right here. Empty vessels, super nice. We got an ability to fly on top of that. Our shots became very kind of normal, but... Oh, no, no, no. We don't want that. We want this. Um, it's true. I'm not, tr I'm not trying to scare you or be like, Well, you... I used to be hip, and then they changed what it was, and yada, 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 right? But when I was a teenager, my parents were always like, Ah, enjoy sleeping in while you can. 
because one day you're not going to be able to. And I was like, yeah, whatever. All I know is me from ages, you know, 3 to 16, so I'm pretty sure I'm confident of how everything's going to go in my life from this point forward, Mom. I'm not a baby, but it's, it's honestly true, you know? I used to wake up around maybe like 11 a few years ago. Literally, I got sick at my uh, in-law's place, and I, I felt it coming on. But then we had a three-hour drive after, you know, I, I felt the sickness coming on uh, that had to be done. From that day onwards, I've never been the same, you know? I, I, I cannot sleep in past, like, 9.30. It, it literally, like, fundamentally changed me. I think what happened, basically, I was super tired. Slept early as a result of being super tired. Woke up early. And then, honestly, I was just kind of like, yeah, this is kind of nice. And I kept it up. <laughs> but now, even, like, you know, I've been getting up at... It doesn't really matter what we pick up here. I've been getting up at, like, you know, nine for a couple years now. Last three or four weeks, just been waking up at eight. And I've been like, you know what, I could go back to bed for an hour, maybe, but that sleep's never that good. What if we just, uh, you know, got up? Pretty soon, by the time I'm like 35, I'm going to be waking up 4.30 a.m. I'm going to be one of those guys. I'm going to be posting these Isaac... I'm going to be in the comments for the 6 a.m. Isaac episodes going, Does anybody want pancakes? We'll go get them. But I think it's true. But I think it's not just like, oh, help me... I don't think it's just, like, physiological. I think there's also, like, a psychological element, to be honest. Like, one of the reasons... Well, actually, I think it's... Let, let me talk about both. I think it's harder to... Oh, we can get these. Ruka! Don't worry, it was not a Ruka incident today. Ruka did come to the vet with us, though. Which, um... Might be contributing to his malaise right now. Um... But one of the things I think for sure is, you know, the older you get, when I was younger, I used to be able to stay up late like crazy. Like in between like 11th grade, well, I don't know, even between like 9th grade and like my last year of university, even when I lived in Korea, I could stay up. If you were like, hey, do you want to stay up to like 5 in the morning? I'd be like, yeah. First off, that sounds super cool. Secondly, easy. No problem, right? Just trying to figure out where I'm going with this one. <laughs> now, I'm like, I basically like sound an alarm to my wife, more or less. I guess we do want sharp plug, and then we'll just yeet it pretty soon. You know what, I'm actually, let's get spiced on this one. Grab this, use that, terrible decision, yeet it again, we just got spun, coupon might give us Mama Mega, it didn't, it gave us another D100 charge. It's a bit of a weird one, I can't deny it. But a very interesting nonetheless as well. Um, but now I, I have like an hour window where I'll say to Kate, like, I gotta be to bed in an hour. And it's not like I would like to be in bed in an hour. It's like for our own safety. It's like Bruce Banner being like, if I get angry, I'm gonna turn into the Hulk. For me, it's like, if I'm not in bed in an hour, first off, I'm gonna get quite irritable, and then I'm just gonna fall asleep. So it's really like this is the time where we should be considering getting home. So as a youngster, you know, sometimes you're like, ruin my whole sleep schedule to watch one more episode of a television show that came out 10 years ago? Sure. As an adult, literally not possible. Not as an adult, I should say. But the older I get, literally not possible. I think that helps you wake up early. The other thing is, I think you start to appreciate the value of a, uh, of a longer day, if that makes sense. When I was, uh, 15, 16, even like my early 20s, I didn't really have anything to do, you know? And I'll, I'll be the first to admit, it, it was a privileged existence, for sure. But like, uh, you know, my parents, when I lived at home, at, at my parents' house, I should say, handled all the domestic responsibilities, you know, they went to work five days a week. Sometimes took a little bit of work home with them. They did the housework on the weekends. They did all the cooking, you know, all the grocery shopping, etc., etc., etc. So you're like, well, if my choices are 11 hours of sleep or like 8 hours of sleep and 3 more extra hours of NBA 2K4, you're like, well, you know, it's not that tough. 
But when you got more responsibilities, you're like, man, I gotta wake up a little earlier. Otherwise, I'll have no free time today. Okay, this time we want that. I think we'll pick this up and just send it. I mean, this is, it's a very strange run. You know my, my practices and protocols. We're gonna keep going until we hit, um, at this point at least, a run that is too good to pass up. Now, I'll tell you, this is not that run. This one's scaring me a little bit with the way it's working. Like, if I, you know, I have a day off. If I uh, woke up on my day off at like 1 p.m., I would be... The guilt would be overpowering, to be honest with you. I would probably be like, oh my god, I have so many things to do, and now, like, you know, I won't be done them until, like, 10 p.m. Uh, am I hinting at it to you? No, no, no. It's not like, uh, you know, it's not like Kate doesn't do her domestic responsibilities. You know, she does more around the house than I do. Just, I don't know, I was talking about it with with my brother-in-law as well, like a year ago, and I was like, you know, I just feel like... I just want to be, like, doing something at all times. <laughs> Even, like, I'll, I'll tell you, here's how, like, my typical Friday goes. Like, I finish work at, like, 9, and you're gonna think this is a psychosis, and for all I know, you might be right, but hear me out here. And I'm interested, don't take this the wrong way. If you're within, like, plus or minus three years of my age, if you're, like, late 20s to mid 30s, let's say, I'm interested in hearing your perspective on this. Don't be mad, other parts of the audience, but if you're like 19 and you're like, here's my thoughts on it, give it a few years and then talk to me. Not because I think that you don't know what you're talking about, but just because we might be a different, you know, we might have different priorities right now. But, uh, you know, I was talking to my brother-in-law. Oh, no, no, wait, sorry, I already went over that. Here's my typical Friday night. I finished work at 9, and I was like, oh, that's a... You know, like, I wake up at, like, you know, 8.39, I go to the gym for an hour and a half, two hours, come back, record for, like, eight or nine hours. And then finally, like, okay, it's my time. What do I do? Well, I gotta set my video, so that's, like, a half an hour. Then after that half an hour, I'm like, oh, I could take some me time. I take, like, ten minutes of me time, and I'm like, yeah, but if I... Do the dishes right now and clean the kitchen a little bit. Then I'll have even more me time tomorrow. And then I'm like, yeah, you know what? Why don't I also, like, shave tonight? And then if I shave tonight, I got so much me time tomorrow. And then, after I finish shaving, I'm like, well, this, I, my number one thing I want to knock out on Saturday would be like, oh, it'd be so nice if I could do, like, a little meal prep. And if I meal prep on Friday night, think about how much me time I'll have on Saturday. What ends up happening... I do, like, almost all that stuff. Oh, this could be it. I do almost all that stuff on Friday. And then on Saturday, I'm like, what? <laughs> I got nothing to do. So then I find stuff to do, you know? But I think, I, honestly, I think it's good. I think it's... I like not having idle time. We, I mean, we've talked about it a lot on the podcast that Dan and I have done. It's really, like, it's not that I demonize other people having idle time. I think I literally have just had enough. I, you might be saying, like, hey, you should work less and, like, just do nothing more. Well, I find doing nothing right now, like, kind of anxiety-inducing, to be honest. But then beyond that, you have no idea how much idle time I had between the ages of, let's say, 5 and 20. I had almost no non-idle time. You know, yeah, I went to school or I went to my job, whatever. But, like, apart from that, there was, like, nothing. <laughs> Nothing going on, no projects, no, you know, home maintenance, only the bare minimum amount of housework, etc., etc. So I think, I'm, I think I'm just making up for lost time. That's the way I'd describe it. So yes, I did go with a new run here. And I'm trying to, you know, the classic temptation for me is to just always go with whatever run um, gets Tech X. But in my defense, this run's like really good. Definitely partly because of Tech X, but like. <laughs> Alright, forgive me. We might put in a little bit more rush strategy. Just because of the fact that, you know, we're, we're doing two episodes in one episode. I'm not trying to ignore the shop. If anything, though, we kind of have this luxury right now. Well, I guess I am literally trying to ignore the shop, but not maliciously, at least. We kind of have access to essentially 
every item in the game as is right now just because of the d100 and I, i'm thanking the eden seed for that one they really they did me a mercy on this one i'm very thankful for it so i think we will re-roll this run it's good it's a little bit uninteresting and we might eventually no longer have the luxury of choosing between those but for now you know we got we got the opportunity to be a little choosy like a choosy mom who chooses jiff We'll get the key. I mean, it, it's boomer energy. I can't deny that. If, can I, by the way, can I stress a little bit of generational resentment towards you? I can already tell you, get ready in advance. Millennials are going to have a little resentment towards Zoomers when both generations get slightly older. The reason is... From my perspective, at least, I mean, no disrespect to the Zoomers who, as of right now, like, average age is, like, you know, 15, maybe. Um, but the millennial generation, you have to put yourself in our shoes a little bit, okay? Literally spent our whole adult lives being considered whiny babies who, you know, are... The, the characteristic that defined my entire generation forever in the eyes of the older generations was, well, they're the, they don't know how to tolerate defeat and hardship. They all grew up on participation trophies and, oh, do I, oh, my son has a peanut allergy and doesn't want to die. Can you not eat your peanut butter sandwich? Like, that was the, millennials are killing Applebee's. How do we stop them? That was the whole discourse and rhetoric surrounding, surrounding my generation. Now we hit 30. Maybe some of us are getting decent jobs, moving up in our lives very, very slightly, and we're lagging behind historical norms to a huge degree due to coming to adulthood during the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. And uh, then we'll say something like, ah, I like doing chores. And everyone goes, okay, boomer, big, big boomer energy. Our generation has not had a chance to do anything. We've just been, we, we, we did like Benjamin Button on 16x speed, you know? We were like a little bitty baby, and then we were old simultaneously, you know, like in an instant afterwards. You gotta give us at least like, and it sounds like a long time, but in the whole scheme of things, it's not really. Can you just give us like maybe, I don't know, 15 to 20 years? We've, we've, we've been dealing with an onslaught our entire existence. I'm just begging for a little bit of, a little bit of mercy. When a millennial says something like, you know, that they enjoy doing a chore, maybe, don't say, oh, big boomer energy, I wouldn't understand that because two years ago I was eating Gushers fruit snacks for lunch. You should say, you know what, good on you, good on you. Because in the eyes of the true boomers, we're, we should be united. That's what I'm trying to say, I guess. I guess we're, I'm trying to say we're on the same side. The, the ink is already dry on how my generation is going to go down in history. Not necessarily, I don't really care because I'm crushing it. But, you know, on a, I, I can understand the resentment is what I'm trying to throw out here. Hold on, I'm trying to think. Blank rune, what do we do with that? But our generation is going to be like yada yada yada, historically low incomes, yada yada yada, property market exploded, yada yada yada. But, you know, and then the Zoomers saved everything. I can already I can already see it happening. So just allow us a little bit of time, okay? I know one of you is going to invent like a you know, it's going to be like a carbon recapture facility built out of like Lego robotic stuff. It's going to be incredible. You're going to save the world. Just give us a minute. That's all. Just just let us have it for a second. We haven't had a whole lot of time prior to this. Can I just own up to the fact that I don't really know what's happening on this run anymore? All I know is our rate of fire is 1, which means I was just going to say soy milk must be involved. Which means we have a 1 damage epic fetus, but it actually seems like really good. There must be sad bombs involved in here as well. I mean, I, I think we should roll with this one. It is strong-ish for sure. And also very weird. Which I'm, you know, kind of describes me in a nutshell. Strongish, 
<laughs> not not necessarily super strong, but strong-ish. Not weak, at least. And a little weird, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Have you heard me speak? Ever? Sir? Yeah, I don't think this one warrants a reroll. I don't think we're gonna get any stranger than this. Not likely, anyway. So anyway, those are my thoughts on the issues facing us as a society. Please subscribe to my newsletter. Or just subscribe in general. I'll take it. Please. Okay, I gotta be honest. The damage from the laser beams, maybe not quite at the level I thought it could be. That's okay. We don't need a key. We got 90 of them. We'll see how this does, okay? We'll see how this does against, uh, against Mom. Actually, I don't even know if that's fair, because I think... Ah, well, screw it. <laughs> I was just going to say, like, I think against Mom, it's not going to do very well. Okay, this is not necessarily strange, because it's just Mom's knife, but a little, a little weird. Sure, car... Oh, God, no, car battery is terrible. I've made a colossal mistake. Let's send it one more time. All right, so this now, this looks like your classic please stop here sort of moment. We've gone from some very unusual runs to uh, a run that's just kind of great. Might not look great, but I I think it is. I mean, that, that damage was really good. I think we might want to stop it here. Are we really going to... I Dude, I guess we are. I guess we're going to force ourselves to stop. And then we're just going to take spider butt. The only thing I want here is like a, a speed upgrade would go a long way considering our speed right now is 0 0.61. Which is very low. That's on the super low side without a doubt. But really like, you know, you might think it's a coward's way out. But really, the D100 is great until it's not. I like to dump it before we hit the point in a music biography where they start playing the, the singer's slow songs. You know what I mean? <laughs> I like I like when we'll finish Rocket Man right around the time that Tiny Dancer comes on and, and call it a day. We don't need to get into the, you know, Rocket Man stuff. Wait a minute, did I say Rocket Man twice? I meant Tiny Dancer. The oh, Rocket Man's the name of the movie, of course. Now we, Now I remember. Excuse me, sir. I have every item in the game. Could you please pay out a little faster? Many people would tell you not to do what I'm doing here. Those people... We have a name for them in my business. Cowards. That's actually so much better. And okay, now it's like a lot better. We'll take the Emperor card. And I don't really want Eve's bird foot because it's stinky, so let's get out of here. All right, all right, it's all coming together. Oopsie, Daisy again. That's not how the song or the song's words go together. Oops. Okay, big emperor. And with Guppy, this one is locked. The box is locked. The lights are on. I have it on extreme authority. It's robot fighting time. Honestly, we should not do this, but let's get weird. I am pro weirdness on this one right now. I I am actually admittedly enough concerned just due to the lack of uh speed. If it weren't for speed, Everything would be completely under control. Like, it, it's actually so good. Even though HP could be better, like, everything else is, is so far and away above where it has to be that it's totally fine. The only issue, and I'm just trying to keep Horror Babylon active, so you know it can't be that stressful, but the only issue is, is actually, now that I look at it, our speed went up because of Horror Babylon, so actually, I think we're better off just, just rolling. Dude, this is going to be, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. 
Ah, that's exciting. Okay. I haven't seen Rocket Man. For all I know, what I said doesn't even apply to Rocket Man. Maybe Elden John just had a totally... You know, just a, a life that was exclusively on the ascent with no strife at any time. I doubt it, though, because they tend not to make... Those would make some pretty boring movies. You know? You're like, a, then he wrote Goodbye Yellow Brick Road. Then he wrote Philadelphia Freedom, apropos of nothing at all, and... <laughs> Uh, another ten million dollars? Okay, sure. Put it in the vault. Tends not to be like that. Tends to be more like, you know... Bad things happen. Like, if anyone is making a movie about your life, it's a great thing, maybe, but it's also a bad thing, you know? It's great, because you're like, oh, obviously, like, I have a story to tell. Maybe I'm a person of some notoriety, in a, in a good way, hopefully, for you, for your sake. Um, but then you're also like, man, I gotta look back and be like, ooh. <laughs> Yikes. They're not gonna put that on the screen, are they? The pot play? Really? I told you I, I would do this. We were gonna do Eggman, but only under the condition that you didn't bring the pot play up. How dare you? Just move along. I mean, I think we're in a very good spot here. I don't think we got anything to fear. You know, I'm, I don't even think we have to fear fear itself on this one. Because there's no fear coming. If there's no fear coming for you, that's like saying there's nothing to fear. Uh, except a big asteroid. Yeah, but like, if you know. I'm going to worry about the stuff that's in my immediate purview before I worry about, you know. Gallagher 37 crashing into Earth that's the size of Ohio was traveling at 900,000 meters per second, you know? That's something that's... I, I don't really have a whole lot of control over that unless they want me to pass gas in its general direction to cause it to deviate slightly from its intended trajectory. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an answer for you in that... in that deportment. Mostly, I just made a joke at my own expense. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, anyway, it's it's very nice. It's not over yet, but it's nice to have one in the books here that... Uh, you know, we it's maybe only happened once in Isaac history before where I... Well, I don't know. It, it Once in the past few years, at least, where I really, like... Did two Isaac episodes in one. It's more like one point six episodes in one, but still. I'm glad it worked out. It could have gone terribly, terribly wrong. Why not? <laughs> That's one where you should probably not say why not and instead say why, but it is complete for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your understanding. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. See ya!